Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Amara Rasgis with Consulting Specifying Engineer, and this discussion is part of our series of talks with technical experts on a whole variety of subjects. Today, I'm speaking with Hassan Obeid from Cummins Power Generation. Hi, Hassan. Hi, Amara. So Hassan is a senior global technical advisor with energy management solutions at Cummins Power Generation. And he focuses on technical vision, business strategy, and solving a wide range of complex business problems. Hassan has been with Cummins since 2007 in a variety of roles, uh, such as power, systems design engineering, project engineering, and applications engineering. Hassan has designed power systems involving switchgear, controls, paralleling, transfer switches, generator sets, microgrid systems, and digital solutions. So Hassan has done a variety of education sessions and webcasts, and it's excellent to be able to pick your brain today, Hassan. Well, thank you, Amara. Looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. So let's get started with the absolute basics. Um, what is a distribution board? So distribution boards are these metal structures that houses switching devices, such as circuit breakers or fuses, uh, conductors, uh, such as cables and bus bars, and transformers, uh, such as current transformers and voltage transformers that we use uh, to feed into um, controls for sensing and metering. Uh, switchboards, they don't have any controls in them. Uh, and we do add controls to control the flow of power. And switchboards, they can be low voltage and the NEMA classification for low voltage is 1000 volts and below or medium voltage, which is above 1000. Actually, NEMA goes up to 100,000. And they're built to certain standards uh, for uh, whether it's uh, IEC or UL standards. Now distribution boards, so we're focused today will be on the low voltage. For the low voltage, they're, class, they're broken into two categories. There are switch gear and there is switch boards. Yeah, so let me ask that question. What is the difference between switch gear and switch boards? It's a very good question. Uh, that's something that uh, a lot of um, people mix the two. And we all call distribution boards, whether it's a switch board or a switch gear, we all call it switch gear, which is that's what we typically, the, the common name that we use when we're designing projects, right? But there is a fundamental difference between the two. Uh, switchboards, right? They're constructed to UL891. That's very essential to, to know that. So it's UL891, they're called dead front switchboards. And they house molded case circuit breakers, MCCBs, or insulated case circuit breakers, ICCBs. And these breakers are built and tested to UL489. Now, the very important thing also to distinguish between switch, go switch gear and switchboards is the instantaneous. The, you, we cannot turn off instantaneous the trip response in the circuit breakers in switchboards. <clears throat> Therefore, switch boards are designed to handle up to three cycles or so of fault current, and then the circuit breakers must strip. Now, switch gear are built a whole new standard, and the standard for switch gear is they're built to I IEEE C37.20.1, and they're tested to C37. Dot 51. Now, switch gear, they do not contain UL489, MCCBs, or ICCBs circuit breakers, the molded case or the insulated case. They have what's called low voltage power circuit breakers, LVPCB. They are con so the LVPCB which is the um, low voltage power circuit breakers are tested or there's a standard for those is UL 1066. What's essential about 1066 is that there is that short time delay that we can extend up to a half a second. So for switch gear, 
they're evaluated and tested to up to a half a second. And a half a second at 60 hertz uh, here in North America is uh, 30 cycles. So the instantaneous region of uh, a circuit breaker can be turned off. Or, I mean, turn off is to a certain level, right? Um, the circuit breakers, they have built-in protection that even if you turn it off, after half a second, the breaker have built-in protection to say, okay, now I need to trip because you have not tripped the circuit breakers, I'm going to trip. But here's the most important thing to distinguish between switchboards and switchgear. In summary, switchboards are UL891. They have molded case circuit breakers, 489, MCCBs and ICCBs. They can contain 1066 breakers, um, just to add to the confusion in here. But again, they're only tested to three cycles. So the instantaneous trip response is required and cannot be turned off. Switch gear is UL1558, right? I they're designed as IEEE C37.20.1 and tested to NEMA C37.51. They contain the UL1066 breakers that they have that short time trip response that allow us to delay uh, the tripping of the circuit breaker for up to a half a second or 30 cycles. So switch gear there uh, evaluated for up to 30 cycles. Okay, so you touched on this for just a moment, but which breakers are applied in switch gear versus switchboards? Yeah, so yeah, this is, this is again, this is very important for us to make sure we, 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 we address it. So uh, 1066 breakers are applied in, in switch gear. Now, <clears throat> here's the confusion. When manufacturers of circuit breakers, they build, uh, you know, to streamline manufacturers, manufacturing processes, what they do is they can use the same breaker that is a 1066 and they can assign it a 489 label and put it in the switchboard. And here's the confusion, right? And you go, okay, well, it's a 1066, but that's okay because even if we take that 1066 breaker that are, we're allowed to go into the, into the short time rating and extend it for a half, up to a half a half a cycle, uh, half a second, we can put that in the switchboard. But once we put it in the switchboard, we cannot exceed up to more than those three cycles. So that's turned off. In switchboards, we have the UL489 breakers that the instantaneous cannot be turned off. Here is another thing that can, you know, that could be a form of confusion is the in 489, you might get an LSI breaker, so long, short, instantaneous. The short time delay or the trip response in a 489 breaker does not allow you, even though you have that trip response that allow you to adjust it, you will not be able to go up to a half a second, right? So again, if you hit a short circuit, the instantaneous is gonna kick in and trip in three cycles or faster for breakers that are 400 amps and larger or um, one and a quarter uh, one and a quarter cycles which is um, a lot faster than than you know three cycles and that's for less than 400 amp circuit breakers so again please note that even though you have the short time or strip response in 489 you cannot go up to a half a second with it. The instantaneous is going to kick in right away. Okay. Okay. So thank you for that clarification. Then my next question is, can you still achieve selective coordination with both of them? One of them? How does that all work? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a, also, you know, consultant engineers or the, in our industry, we might assume that you can only achieve selective coordination in a switch gear. No, I can achieve selective coordination in both switch gear and switchboards, right? Um, now the question always comes into that instantaneous region. So some jurisdictions allow you, to, uh, you, you know, you don't need, they don't ask you to coordinate anything below 0 0.1 second, some 0 0.01 seconds. Again, you have to look into where you're applying your project. 
So anything above 0.1 seconds, you will be able to coordinate the circuit breakers right on both switch gear and switch boards. Now, again, the main question is, what do we do in the instantaneous? The problem is, if we have an instant this this massive amount of fault current, and now we're in the instantaneous region, we don't know which breaker is going to trip first. Certain manufacturers of of um, circuit breakers, they guarantee you that if you use certain breakers in a certain order, you might have to also run some communication wires in between them. They tell you if you put this breaker uh, on top, this one on the next level, and the next one on the next level in distribution boards in that order, they guarantee that the one on the bottom will trip first, then the next one, and then the next one. So they guarantee that for, for um, switchboards. As switch gear, what's nice about them is also that we can coordinate in that instantaneous region. So you can achieve selective coordination with both to answer your question. Okay, good, good, thank you. All right, so electrical engineers, what should they consider when specifying switch gear? So <clears throat> obviously when we're specifying gear in general, we have to look at the, you know, fault, you know, how much fault current do I need to withstand, size, protection, and what have you. But what applies to us today here for this discussion, what's really important is that if I have switch gear and that first level below that switch gear must be braced for the available fault current that the switch gear can handle, right? Or the delivering. So if I, if I have a switch gear and it is, you know, the fault maximum fault current is 150,000 volts of 50,000 amps. The conductors that are leaving that switch switch gear into the next distribution board, they must be braced for that available fault current for the duration as well. So we said we can go up to a half a second. That means they need to be able to withstand that fault current for that duration. So if we have transfer switches below that, below that switch gear, they also need to be able to withstand that fault current for that duration. And so this is when you'd have to specify a short time rating on a transfer switch right below that switch gear. Again, if the switch gear is it's way upstream, right? And then we want to be able to have achieve selective coordination on multiple levels all the way down to three or four or seven boards below or 10 boards below. If I if I can handle, if I'm going to have thousands of fault current going through that distribution, the, through that switch gear into the next level, everything below it must be braced for that available fault current. And this is why we have to specify a transfer switch with a short time rating. Okay, so let's talk about applications. When do you apply switchboards? When do you apply switch gear? Give me some examples here. Yeah, so typically switchboard, their switchboards are the short circuit rating. They can go up to 150,000 KIC, right? And so we see these in basic office, commercial buildings, and real, uh, real retail. But we can also see them in healthcare as well. You know, there's a common misconception that healthcare always specifies switch gear. Well, we can see them in health in healthcare as well. Uh, switch gear because it's beefier, it's more expensive. We'll see them a lot in could be data centers. We can also see them in hospitals and healthcare. What's important to note is that. Um, really evaluate the project needs and specify the right one accordingly. It's just easier sometimes to say, okay, we'll just specify switch gear and call it good, but you're paying more money for something that you might not need. But if you do specify switch gear, again, make sure that you specify at least the first level below that uh, of equipment below that to be able to handle that fault current for that time duration. So that's why we specify short time rating on transfer switches. Okay, well, thank you for that. Excellent overview. That was a lot of information. I do appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank you for the great questions today. Yeah, yeah. And today I've been speaking with Hassan Obeid with Cummins Power Generation. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Omara. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.